So this was basically a do or die moment and you really are starting to see why Hades would have uh, been a brutal ruler and uh, savage leader in the previous timeline, which really up to the past few episodes, you kind of look at Hades and you're like, man, how is he such a cool, cold, ruthless bastard? But yeah, it's starting to click a little more. And very similar to a show I really enjoyed recently, the seventh time loop, The Villainess Show. Similar situation. Current day, you can actually easily see how you navigate someone from becoming a psychopath, but without that guiding hand, very clearly could go down some bad paths. And in episode three, they pretty much confirmed that Hades was more or less being like, feeling like he was forced against gunpoint, that he was going to have to take drastic measures. That is until our girl ended up, you know, navigating the course a little differently and he kind of let out a sigh of relief. But he comes into this episode with basically, I wish I had a pool noodle because I would give you a visual demonstration of just how big dick energy this move was. He slapped that shit down on the table, not only making the dragon bow down to him, he collectively made that whole crowd call him daddy. And the fact that we end this episode with love is war, I'm like, shit Kaguya-sama, what's this mean? Kratos, the sister banger, is trying to come to take our girl Jill away. And our boy said, bet, I'm loving the show. I have full live reactions though over on Patreon if you want to see my full and good thoughts to any of this do-over damsel greatness over there exclusively. The biggest thing that I can give it praise for is that while I do think just given how many like, okay, no matter what there's going to be sus vibes to the show even knowing that our boy probably doesn't have a sexual bone in his body as it stands like he's mentally probably a lot younger than even our girl is if you look at her at face value, but at the same time, there's no denying it, it does have sus energy. It does at face value. The thing about it is it's, I am, I'm going to say I'm 100% confident the whole reason why he needs someone under the age of 14 is because it's related to his curse. It's something to do with it. In this episode, they actually touch upon some lore of their world. And it's basically, you know, the two different sides, dragon and goddess, and kind of like that whole mixture. So the fact that he needs someone with great magic, can see the dragon, also under the age of 14, it's a very specific reason, and it doesn't come across as sexual. The thing is, is our boy's clearly going to fall in love with her. Now, at the end of the day, doesn't matter if our girl's actually 16 mentally, like her body is that of a child. So no matter what, whether he waits for her to hit 18 or whatever, people are going to make the grooming allegations no matter what. And I can't say I blame them. The thing is, is I can appreciate that the fact that one, the main reason for this is clearly there's actually a narrative reason rather than like a fetish bait reason. But you, you can't deny that they do go a little sus with it. Luckily, the sus energy has remained fairly tame all things considered but i won't deny the stuff i enjoy the most is when it's more like the dinner party stuff as an example i much prefer versus the bed scenes the dinner party stuff's funny because at the end of the day she's kind of uh misleading him she's going for the food and that in return makes him think that she's more interested than she actually is and she has to have a harsh reality check when they're like hey if you're not actually interested in the Emperor, you probably shouldn't keep going. She's like, no, I go for the food. Yeah, but it's going to get his hopes up. Surprise Pikachu face. That shit's funny. And while at face value, the whole bed stuff was actually directed in a wholesome way. Yeah, I'm not going to be like, damn, I can't wait for the next scene of that. No, the funny stuff. Yes, the quote unquote wholesome stuff I could do without. The thing is, is like I said, they're clearly putting the emphasis on the age thing as a curse-related reason. I would be shocked if that's not the reason, and over time we're eventually going to learn. Like, they're already dropping some decent hints and bombshells over the course of the past couple of episodes, especially in this one with the whole kind of history lore lesson, so we just have to wait and see where they go with it. So it's like, it's sus, but it's as least of a sus show as it could be given the circumstances. And thankfully, I don't look at Hades the same way I look at Kratos, which he's, th that dude bangs his sister and wants to do God knows what to our girl. Like, he's Jamie Lannister without the development. Um, so yeah, like, it, it, could, it could be worse. 
But at the end of the day, the intro to this episode was bend the knee or die, and that was badass. Like, our boy stood on business. He stood on business and said, like, he could have killed everyone. He could have killed everyone other than the daughter, and no one would have looked at him as, like, a tyrant. They would have said, well, he messed around, he found out. That's basically it, right? You know, he, he rose a rebellion, and, you know, Emperor stood on business. But, because of our girl showing a different way, he tries to save everyone. And he's actually fairly kind. And now we're in a situation where they're trying to figure out, you know, her and the dragon, like, what's the best way? Like, do we make him a cutesy emperor? emperor? No, like, if you do that, people are going to walk all over you. You do have to have that strong leader, but there's also ways to show kindness without necessarily making it feel like kindness at face value. Like, what he did for that girl's father in terms of giving him an out, like, is better than most people in his position deserve and it'll be very interesting to see because immediately with this show from the first episode was that it gave me seventh time loop the villainess vibes where you pretty much are in a situation where like now granted it's not as bad as dying six times and now you're on your seventh but still like the fact that you have that restart you don't know if that restart will happen again you know it's not like she's getting the subaru treatment where she's constantly checkpointing around and stuff but instead, like, you know, what easily could have been the worst character for her to end up with now is actually showing what his true colors can be. And he grew up in an environment that really hated and disposed him and to just t treated him like trash. But as he says, I'm still the emperor. You can feel what you want, but I'm in charge. Like, he does need that guiding hand, and it does feel like she will be the perfect one for that. But it'll be interesting to see where they ultimately take these two's relationship because there's a lot of uncertainty on where they actually will go, if they actually will fall in love, and how they'll write that to maybe not feel like it was like, okay, he waited till she was a certain age sort of a deal, right? Because like, it could go weird, no one's probably going to deny that, but somehow they did avoid the sus allegations as much as humanly possible, given the circumstances. I get why people at face value would be like, wait a second, why should we watch this show? But... In most of the time, the show's actually pretty harmless. And the stuff that even that makes me raise an eyebrow, I don't think it's, like, harmful. It's just, it's kind of in a weird middle ground where I'm like, okay, let's, let's get back to the dinner party, if that makes sense. But either way, great episode. The show, especially with episodes three and now four, I really think elevated this show. And uh, I'm very excited to see where they're going to go. And hopefully people aren't going to sleep on it too much, because this is one of the shows that I honestly am looking forward to the most as it stands. Thoughts down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe. Of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, we have full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today we got Azoff Montgomery, Migs021, James Wright, Gareth Green, Durberg Jude, and we also have third, Dynasty. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. Y'all have a good one.